So today we have some Blackmagic Film Gen 5 RAW recorded with a Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and a little bit of a sequence here with, you know, we got the dogs, we got Christmas decorations going up and I want to pick this frame to start our grade. So we'll pop over to the color tab within DaVinci Resolve and the first thing we need to do is pop a color space transform on here so that we can see what's going on. We have like I said, Gen 5 film, so we'll unwrap from wide gamut Gen 4 and 5, and we'll go and find film Gen 5. And in this stage, we're not necessarily color grading, we're more of color correcting. And so we can identify some issues that we have here. First off, the white balance isn't feeling totally right to me. It's feeling a little bit green and a little bit warm. And luckily, since it's raw, we can go ahead and just uh, change the settings here. So I think what I want to pick to white balance on, this should be an all black shirt. So I'm gonna go to our sizing controls, let's zoom in and then we'll pan over to the right and then we can find this in the waveform. I'm gonna actually turn waveform down just a little bit so that we can see the nuances of the line and then we can zoom in just like you would for footage. Okay. Red is popping up over the top. We kind of want them all to be intersecting so that it creates a, a white line on the waveform. So let's just bump the white balance down and that's much better. We won't go too much further than that. Uh, we can go in and get rid of our sizing and then there is a much better starting point. Okay, so I always start off with a contrast curve to begin. You guys know me, I am a, a big fan of curves. If you're a primaries person, by all means, go for it. I'm gonna pop over here to curves. I'm gonna turn editable splines on. And I want to capture sort of, this is a hard shot to, to grade here because she's in the shadows, the tree is in the shadows, and this is sort of our subject, but then we have this super bright window, which luckily isn't losing detail. Maybe this tiny little part up top is, but we can turn on highlight recovery and get that back. So what I want to do is an S curve and I want to prioritize keeping this warm glow. We want to boost the exposure of everything in here. And then I want to maintain the richer dark areas of the, the shot, but to make it more gradual so that the shirt doesn't look super crunchy. So I think what I'm going to do is take the brightest point down and then bring everybody up to that point and then maybe adjust it down a little bit. So all we've done here is sort of raise the exposure but it's, it tapers off at the top. So notice down here in the waveform, keep your eye on this little part right here. The brightest part of the image hasn't really moved but everything else has moved up. And then that gives us the opportunity to go down here. I'm gonna bring the handle close and then we'll bring this down just a little bit. Maybe raise the darkest point and pull it a little bit more. And we'll just keep adjusting this until we arrive somewhere that looks good. Might be about there. Constantly go back and look at your adjustments. I think that's looking much better. The shirt doesn't look too crunchy. We still have these dark parts. We're not losing any detail anywhere, but the whole image looks much brighter, which I think looks better. So the next thing that I wanna change is actually the color of this tree. It's looking kind of yellowish. It's blending into the scene. I, I want it to pop and I want it to seem more green. So I'm gonna add a new node with option S. And this is my favorite way to correct things like this. I'm gonna go over to the color warper. I'm gonna change to 12 partitions. And then if you use your eyedropper, you can make sure eyedropper's on here, qualifier, and you sort of swim around in the color that you're wanting to change. You can look down here at the color warper and it looks like this right here is the Christmas tree. Most of that is living in there. So if we grab this endpoint, we can change and sort of hue shift in that direction. We get a little bit more warmth. We wanna go in the opposite direction and push a little bit more of a vibrant green. And then I actually want to desaturate it. And so to do that, you pull it in towards the center. So let's look at before and after. 
I think that looks much, much, much better. And we're not affecting skin tones too much. We've only grabbed that color. You could also do this over here in Hue versus Hue and maybe grab that color right there. I actually really like the color warper. It's one of my favorite ways to hue shift. And now we'll just do a couple things to make the colors pop a little bit more. One of my favorite quick ways to add some color separation is to add two serial nodes. To change the first one, go into color space, change it to YUV, and then pop over to the RGB mixer. Go to blue output here and grab the blue and just ease it up. Here, I'll, I'll punch it so you can see what's happening here. I like the way that it's shifting colors here. I can't even really explain what's happening under the hood, but I usually bump this up to 1.1 maybe, and it just puts a little bit of richness in there. And then I go to the node after it, go over to primaries, grab the gamma and pick a color that is cooler. Sometimes I want a green, sometimes I'm over here in the teals and we'll go there. And then I'll go to my keying options to key output, grab the gain and ease it down until it makes sense. So this is too much. It's making the image way too cold. It kind of washes it out. It might go down to like 0.45. So then if we grab both of these nodes, turn them off. The first node introduces some richness. The second one kind of cools everything down. It creates a little bit of color separation there. If we zoom in here to like her hands, everything that's more in the shadows or in the lower mid-tones is going more towards the, the cooler end and everything else is kind of staying and actually potentially even getting richer. And if you wanted to, you could go back in here and maybe do a little bit more. I like that quite a bit. Last thing I wanna do is to lean into this warm glow kind of look. This sunlight is looking very white, which is more than often ideal but I want to make it just a little bit rosier, a little bit more orange. I like that spot right there. And then I always like to go into the key output and really fine tune where that is. So there's before and after. It might take away a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll pop over to film grain. My favorite is 35 millimeter 400T on the preset. Go into advanced controls, turn the midtones down, and then we'll turn this up a bit. Turn this up a bit more. And that's probably what I would do to this shot. That's probably my workflow for this shot. This is the look that I'm going for. There's a whole bunch of other clips in this sequence. So what we can do is hit option one and that saves the grade to the number one slot. And then if you go to any of these other shots and you hit command one, it will paste that grade on top. So as you can see, we are at the same starting point with all these shots and they will all need to be corrected because they're not matching and that's totally okay. Maybe we go to this one. So here we got Remy here and this contrast curve is a little too extreme, but that's totally fine. We can just go into here and just reduce the contrast a bit. Go over here, here we got Aspen falling asleep on her bed. We'll just raise the exposure with ISO, I think. Same thing with this one, it's all the boxes. We'll bump this up to all the way to a thousand. That looks great, that looks great, that looks great. That one looks good too. Got some of the ornaments going on the tree. Great. That's great. And then maybe this one deserves a little bit of a exposure boost. And there we go. Now we have a color graded sequence. All the clips match. This one, our, our hero shot that we graded first, it looks like because there's light coming onto the lens element, we're losing a little bit of contrast on this tree. I think that's fine, especially since earlier I let this lens flare come in the beginning of the shot. So it's kind of communicating that there's, you know, light filtering in. So I think that totally works. 
So anyway, there is a little matched color graded sequence with black magic film gen 5 let me know what you guys think of it if you would change anything if you would do anything differently and as always thanks for watching i appreciate you stopping by and i hope to see you next time